the pleasure of uh, introducing uh, Dr. Uh, Arindam Roy, who is going to speak about uh, a very important aspect of uh, the current scenario. Telemedicine, where does it stand? What was its role? I understand and all of us are familiar with cases in the courts of uh, Indian law wherein people have been punished and penalized for having treated people on uh, on, on not one-to-one -one face to face basis. We have come a long way and once the COVID uh, pandemic was there, the government of India and the regulators took a very quick action and we, as early as March 2020, they sanctified telemedicine in the troubled times of COVID. We would hear from him what are the comments of experts in India and then maybe his own comments on that field. Over to you. He's working as a assistant professor in the Saugar Dutta Memorial Hall, Kolkata, and he has various publications in national and international journals. Uh, over to you, Dr. Roy. Good afternoon uh, and thank you, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are clear. The audio. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, so thank you, thank you, sir, for your kind introduction, and uh, uh, thanks the organizers uh, for giving me the opportunity to discuss a uh, you know very uh, uh, vibrant topic of the uh, telemedicine in this uh, COVID-19 era to treat the diabetes. So uh, being an endocrinologist, diabetologist, uh, uh, we have used this uh, telemedicine uh, not too much uh, beyond this COVID-19 era, but after the COVID-19 starts uh, almost one or one and a half years back. Uh, we have used this thing in a you know uh, you know very in a great way uh, so that uh, quite uh, experience we have gathered already so uh, uh, today i will just uh, discuss the matter on a platform that uh, actually gives the uh, uh, you know the uh, different issues that were discussed in uh, uh, this a uh, american diabetic association meeting in 2021 so uh, i will just first summarize the whatever the discussion that happened there uh, uh, for this telemedicine on the diabetes care in uh, COVID-19 era and uh, beyond the outpatient uh, these opportunities. So to start the discussion, uh, uh, I have the deliberation of uh, Dr. Mishli L. Griffith, who spoke about the outpatient opportunities of diabetes care. Uh, uh, he actually, she actually pointed out that the telehealth for diabetes care uh, 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 gives the access to patients uh, with limited diabetes specialty care in the areas and besides it it has a strong evidence base and also that increases uh, from the uh, and the competition from the novel service providers and the facilitating uh, other uh, di diabetes technology tools uh, on the telehealth can yield more benefits she also presented the data from 2014 treat study she showed that the telehealth tools that had significant improvement uh, when it came to an endocrine consult over the usual care. According to a national uh, uh, survey in the US uh, in 2017, she presented the data that 52% of the population preferred their own clinician via the telehealth as compared to 15% who considered the leaving their current clinician to see one uh, who offered by telehealth. Also, the strategic incorporation of the asynchronous type of telehealth can uh, also be dis distinctive as a future oppor opportunity, which she highlighted. Dr. Mishli also shed the light on challenges of telehealth tools we are facing, uh, uh, you know, uh, which included the post, you know, the PEG patient uh, perception, equally e equity of the access, and also uh, CMS pre regulation, inoperability issues. At the same time, uh, another doctor, Dr. Uh, Athena Phyllis uh, uh, Simakas, who actually had a talk uh, on the scope of telemedicine in diabetes care into the uh, COVID-19 era. Uh, 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 she told that uh, with the virtual care visits, the communication uh, uh, with remote real-time patient monitoring devices, interprofessional collaboration, and at the same time, the digital access technology will be super powering uh, the medical care. Uh, it also revolutionized the health care that would lead to better patient care, communication, interprofessional collaboration and empowerment of the patients as well as to the caregivers. So digital health in, uh, integration, it is uh, much more than the apps and the devices which she commented. At the same time, it is not only for the diabetes care but also for the patients who are actually senior citizens, the pregnant individuals and the, for the hospitalized patients uh, which she told it will of great help. 
So video conference technology and enabling software to uh, connect the providers in underprivileged communities uh, with terms of specialists and experts increase the long-term telemonitoring, collaboration and learning on urgent social topics, the conditions uh, she also added. She highlighted at the same time uh, uh, the DALSI digital educational texting program which was incorporated in the US to educate and motivate the patients by message testing, inquiring about the COVID status, information about the vaccine and testing sites, and at the same time, the blood sugar statistics. So enabling software to connect the providers in the underprivileged communities with the terms of specialists and experts increase the long term, you know, the telemonitoring, uh, the collaboration and learning on urgent social topics and condition that also was powered. So she ended her talk by giving a brief on digital health uh, integration like the uh, ZILT clinical interface uh, that also involved the patient education, the applications and programs and devices at the same time the rapid uh, uh, the management, uh, uh, the kits at the same time the non-clinical services. Now coming to a paper that was published in this uh, uh, American Diabetic Association 2021 uh, from India by, uh, 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 by the Amata Ghosh and Ritesh Gupta Anup Mishra. Uh, that was the aim of the study was in view of restriction on mobility of the patients because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Face-to-face -face consultation are difficult. Uh, so they sought to study the feasibility of the telemedicine in this scenario. And they actually gathered the data from the PubMed and Google Scholar search engine uh, uh, on the topics like telemedicine, diabetes, COVID-19, and also uh, 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 you know the existing guideline that included uh, those by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India were also accessed in the study. So the results that discuss the evidence and general guidelines regarding the role of telemedicine in patients with diabetes along with its utility and limitation and the concluded that telemedicine is definitely a useful tool for managing the patients of diabetes during this lockdown period rather the uh, but the uh, there is limited data and further research is required uh, you know to for its long term utility and benefit. At the same time, the technology that finds the expanded role in patients' diabetes care. So, uh, in uh, here, uh, Amisha Walia, Dr. Amisha Walia, which is actually the Division of Endocrinology, Metabolism, and Molecular Medicine Center for Health Sciences and uh, you know the Outcome Research in the Northwestern University of the Feinberg School of Medicine. Uh, she actually uh, uh, added that uh, uh, we know there are so many people who are getting suboptimal care in terms of diabetes, inpatient and outpatient, because we don't reach them all. Uh, we really need to use the technology, you know, as a base. So Dr. Walia here to mention is one of the five uh, presenters who shared their first-hand experience in inpatient technology during the symposium of automation and expanded use of technology in the inpatient setting uh, in an update. Uh, Dr. Robert uh, J. Rushakov is the MD of Professor of Medicine of the UCSF actually give the discussion on the virtual glucose management service that is a VGMS in the use of UCSF. The automated uh, uh, the service tracks daily reports of the patients who have the hyperglycemic and hypoglycemic readings uh, are using a pump or have the type 1 diabetes. Here, uh, you know, uh, with the introduction of this VGMS has resulted in a 39% decrease in the patients uh, on the daily hyperglycemia list and 38% decrease in the glucose parameters uh, 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 of less than 70, that's a hypoglycemia range, and 64% in a, a glucose level less than 40 milligram deal, that is a severe hypoglycemia. At the same time, Dr. Addy uh, L. Fra, uh, Fortman, who is also, you know, uh, give the uh, statistical value of significant uh, benefit in the CGM group uh, for the time in range, that is 70 to 250 milligram per DL, and the CGM group was also achieved 18.5 milligram per DL lower mean glucose and spend time above that of the 250 milligram per DL, uh, which is the data from you know the health bar to COVID-19 that compared the inpatient use of continuous glucose monitoring CGM to the point of care testing in the hospital. The Dr. David C. Klonoff is actually MD Medicine, the Diabetes Research Institute, you know, the Mills uh, Peninsula Medical Center, to actually uh, uh, predicted that the CGM will become the widely adopted in hospital wards, even in the before it was widely adopted in the intensive care unit, because the ward patients are usually evaluated every four hours, much less than other uh, in the ICU where the hypoglycemia symptoms and uh, the falling blood glucose uh, will be noticed. 
so between the 7% and 17% of the hospital patients have a hypoglycemic episode as Dr. Klonoff added and each episode costs around uh, $12,000 uh, you know, uh, at that at, at, at uh, average of 4.1 days uh, uh, added in a hospital stay and brings a 2.2 times greater risk of death. So CGM in the hospital setting can help to prevent this complication. At the same time, uh, uh, the nursing staff has been a big advocate uh, for this device of the CGM because they have been uh, uh, seen in the bedside benefit for the patients who are able uh, to self-manage. As Dr. Uh, Aloy, the Joseph A. Aloy, uh, he mentioned, and also uh, it's important to proactively develop the politics uh, as same policies and procedures to govern the ACL use, that is the hybrid closed loop system. Now coming to a guide to connected health device and remote patient monitoring vendors uh, uh, in healthcare IT news uh, that gives that in an age when nearly uh, nearly everyone is digitally connected in some way, even many senior citizens were often characterized by uh, 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 technophobic. It only makes sense that the healthcare industry is seeing a lot of uh, connected uh, health devices and remote patient monitoring technologies. So connected health devices run the gamut uh, from wearable heart monitors to Bluetooth enabled scales uh, to four Fitbits and they provide the health measures of the patients and transmit them back to the providers or in some cases are reported uh, uh, back, uh, uh, back to the providers to facilitate the healthcare decisions from after. And also the remote patient monitoring technologies akin to telemedicine technologies uh, since they automatically observe and report on patients often with chronic illness so caregivers can remotely keep the tabs on the patients. Two healthcare CIOs, CMOs, and other leaders uh, find connected health devices and RPM technologies. Healthcare IT News has compiled this uh, comprehensive listing of the vendors here, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, this concise descriptions will be fine. So, to summarize this American Diabetic Association 2021 discussion on this uh, telemedicine, the telehealth for diabetes care gives access to patients with limited diabetes specialty care. The telehealth increases the competition from the Nobel services providers in diabetes care. There was discussion in 2014 treat study that the telehealth tools had significant improvement over the usual care for the endocrine consult. The US study also revealed that 52% wanted own clinician via the telehealth were 15% to leave the current clinician for telehealth. Also telehealth tools facing uh, the challenges including the equity of access, inoperability issues and among others. The digital health integration includes the apps, the patient education, the RPM kits, non-clinical services. Telemedicine helps in remote patient monitoring, including the high-risk patient like diabetes, elderly, and ecosystem that was used for the long term, you know, the telemonitoring, collaboration, also case-based learning on the urgent social topics. And connected devices, smart texting programs, reports, EMR data components, and the virtual database clinics and uh, uh, the, the DALSI digital educational texting program involved in querying COVID status at the same time the blood glucose statistics. Thank you for your kind listening. May I request Dr. Shetty to please continue.